Women have been giving birth for centuries, so it's a pretty natural experience, right? Wrong. I'm Stephanie King, professional doula, childbirth educator, and the creator of the My Essential Birth Course, the online childbirth education course that's helping women everywhere confidently achieve their best birth. Today's culture would have us think that birth should be treated like an illness or an emergency, and that most of us need other people telling us what's best for our bodies because we aren't the experts. So sit tight, because if you're tuning into this podcast, you'll probably start to believe in your body, your intuition, and find yourself empowered and confident to do what it takes to have the birth of your dreams. If you like listening to me take you through these weekly topics step-by-step, then you're going to love the My Essential Birth course. Make sure that you're subscribed to the podcast and definitely head over to myessentialbirth.com for the free downloads mentioned right here in these episodes and to join the birth course and community full of pregnant moms just like you. I have to add a disclaimer that I am not a medical professional and I cannot provide medical advice. All of the information expressed in this podcast are based off of personal, professional, and educational experiences and are my own opinions. Please work with a provider you trust for medical advice during your pregnancy and birth. This week's reviewer of the week is Bethany Edge 310, and she says, just what I wanted to find. Just found out I am pregnant with my second child. I work at a gym, and I was starting to get hit by some morning sickness. Decided to go work out and chose to listen to your fitness in pregnancy podcast. I laughed when you mentioned that exercise could help with morning sickness because it was definitely helping mine. I will be subscribing and listening again. Thank you so much, Bethany. I'm really excited that you left that review, especially excited because of who I have with me here today. Um, I'm going to let her introduce herself in just a moment, but this is a member of the My Essential Birth Course community, and she had a couple posts that she had posted within that community that made me really feel like other women need to hear this. Other women will really benefit from her story and her pregnancy and how she's handling things. So I want you guys all to be really excited to hear from Jessica today. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple of things that are really important to her. And I think other moms are really going to benefit from, especially when we're talking about not just fitness, which I know that that review was about, but we're going to talk about being pregnant over the age of 35. And in Jessica's case, she's even a little older than that. There are some stigmas that go with this whole, oh no, you know, she's over 35. That means she's high risk and we've got to talk induction and you need to meet with a high risk person. And we're going to use the word geriatric and all these terrible things that happen when we're over 35, which are unfounded. So uh, without further ado, Jessica, will you take a moment and introduce yourself a little bit of your background, a little bit about your family, whatever you'd like, and then we'll jump in. Yes, for sure. I'm so excited to be here. You are one of my favorite people to listen to. Um, I found you well, probably over two years ago, um, we were pregnant and the baby didn't stay around. <laughs> but um, this is our, I guess they call it a rainbow baby. So we're really excited about that. And so I've been listening to you for a long time. And um, I'm 43 and it's my first baby. So first pregnancy that has made it all the way. And we're super excited. I actually think he's probably the same baby that was here the first time around. Uh, my boyfriend and I were only together for five months. And he's like, I think he was like, whoa, five months. I thought you guys were together a lot longer. You guys aren't <laughs> ready. I'm coming back later. And um, yeah, I think he's totally the same baby. And super excited to talk to you guys today and tell you about my journey. I love it. Okay, 43, and you guys are in LA area. You don't have to go into exactly where, but I want people to know like California area and maybe some of the things that you're dealing with or um, just the like the, the people around there. Because I know even within the birth group, you're like, I have an amazing midwife if anybody's looking for someone. And Oh, I do. I have an amazing midwife. I'm in Southern California. Um, she's with Eastside Midwifery and they have a great team. I want to say they have 10 or 15 midwives there. I actually haven't met the others. I've only, you know, met with her. Um, and I've known her now for a little over two years. She's so sweet and so patient. She's been, um, her name is Michelle Ray. So if you guys wanted to look her up, I actually saw her yesterday at my 36 week mark. So I'm at 36 weeks now. And um, I had mentioned that I was going to be on a podcast. <laughs> and I was like, can I, you know, can I mention you? Because obviously you're an important part of my journey. And she was like, of course. And I was like, you're going to start blowing up. And I'm like, but you are probably already really busy. I mean, she's, I feel like every time I talk to her and every time we have an appointment, she's like, another mom's going into labor. I have to reschedule. <laughs> and I'm like, you're just not, you're just not allowed to reschedule when I'm going into labor. 
<laughs> yeah, but, reschedule um, other people for your labor, right? Yeah, <laughs> but she uh, she is amazing. So if you're in the Alhambra area or Southern California area, you know, I'm sure I'm um, reaching out to her to the office that she works for, they'd be happy to talk to you guys. That's great. And if you, I'll get her information afterwards and I'll make sure to put it in the show notes. So if anyone wants to be able to click the link and take a look at her, they can do that too. Is this like a a birth center midwifery group or are they just home births? It is a birth center. Yes. And also home births. And we are planning a home birth. So, and I don't even know where that came from, to be honest with you. It (laughs) might have been that I just started listening to your podcast and then was like, oh, yeah, a home birth. Totally. I could see myself doing that. I mean, I think I'm kind of like a little, definitely a little hippie. So (laughs) I was like, oh, yeah, I could, I could do a home birth. We could do this. And, and then I, and then once I decided that was it, that's what was happening. Oh, good. We're doing a home birth. Originally, you were just planning on hospital, but then, after some, I don't know what, talking with friends or listening to the podcast or? I think I was mostly listening to the podcast. I mean, I think I, I don't know that I really ever thought about it. I think I just assumed kind of like everybody else, like, yeah, I'm going to do it in the hospital, but I'm going to go natural. I mean, I always thought like, okay, I'm going to do natural. I want to be present. Um, I mean, like I said, I'm 43. This honestly is going to be our one and done baby. <laughs> like we don't see ourselves like planning. If another baby came, it would be by accident. Like this one's planned. It would be like, oh my gosh, we're having another baby. Like we're a lot older already. <laughs> like We're hoping we're going to be able to keep up with this one. So yeah. um, if I ever initially was like, oh, when I, if I ever get pregnant, we're going to have a home birth. I don't even know that I ever thought about home birth. But then when I started, I, most of it, I was when I was thinking about getting pregnant and kind of, I was definitely preparing for it ahead of time. I was searching stuff like um, 40 and pregnant or over 40 and pregnant, just to kind of see what moms were saying that they were kind of dealing with what their journey looked like at 40. Cause I mean, let's just keep it real. Our energy is not the same, you know, like I, I, I'm pretty energetic. I, I think I'm young for my age and stuff, but I mean, I like to take naps and sometimes I go to bed before 10, you know, like I cannot hang out and party for two or three days like I used to in my 20s. Like that's just not happening. Um, So I was like, okay, what does a pregnancy journey look like for a woman in their 40s? And what do I need to be thinking about? Or what do I need? How do I need to prepare my body just so that I'm ready, so that I'm in the best shape I can be even to get pregnant? So that's not an issue. Um. And there was not a lot out there, but I found your podcast and then I just was like, oh, well, this seems interesting. Let me just start listening to this. And you're so easy to listen to that I just always listen to it. I was like, oh, this is this is cool. Okay. And you talk a lot about, you know, the options that you have in home birth. And I think that's when I was like, oh, a home birth. Hmm, this sounds like something I would be interested in. Okay. And I, I really think that's where it came from. I, I love that. Um, I It makes me wonder though did you so did you ever meet with an OB did you ever like go for like your first I'm pregnant or you just always have met with a midwife yeah no I never did that I never went to an OB um I mean I've been to an OB for my standard checkups I probably honestly wasn't as consistent as I should be even with that but um I just started searching midwives and I don't even know, yeah, I probably learned that word from your podcast, to be honest. <laughs> and I just went online, it was like midwives in my area. And then I took a list of every midwife I could find within like a 15, 20 minute radius of where I live, journaled it, and then started making phone calls one after the other, after the other, after the other. And when I spoke to Michelle, she spent so much time with me on the phone. I think I was on the phone with her an hour the first time I talked to her. And the other midwives, I mean, they were friendly and they answered my questions, but it wasn't the same. You know, they were really just answering questions and then moving on. I was like, okay, so didn't really have a connection with her on the phone. And not that I necessarily was expecting one, but when I spoke to Michelle, I was like, oh, this is it. Like, she's so you patient. She, yeah, I was like, she is taking the time to tell me things I wouldn't even think to ask about and... I just fell in love with her on the phone. I was like, okay, I definitely want to interview her in person. And um, and at that point, my fiance was like, not about it. You know, he was like, a home birth? Are you crazy? Like, this is dangerous. You're older. We need to be in the hospital. What if something happens? And I'm like, just be open. I'm lucky that he is open. So I was like, just be open. Like, let's listen to what she has to say. You can ask her whatever questions you have. And he's more comfortable with it now. But in the beginning, he was very, 
I think like most men just worried, you know, like, cause they always, they concerned for mom, right. want to take care of you, right. Want you to be safe. Right. That's yeah. That's really neat. I, so even when he had met her the first time that was the, so his experience was still like, I don't know about this. Did it calm him at all? Um, I think it might have calmed him a little bit, but he was still, yeah, I don't know about this. <laughs> He's like, okay, I'm going to be open. We're going to see where this goes. And, and he told her, you know, like, I'm supportive, but not completely on board. Like, he would prefer me to be in, you know, I think maybe even today, I mean, I haven't asked him, I probably, like, won't just because I'm like, okay, well, you're letting me do it at home. So I'm just gonna leave it alone, you know, so, uh, but there's a part of him that I think would want me to be in a hospital. When you when you met with this midwife then and you had said I'm 40 or over 40, was that ever an issue for her? Or did you ever have to hear the like, oh, well, you're over 35, so? Never. And I asked her, you know, I just point blank asked her, you know, like, how do you feel about me being 43? Do you have clients that are older or like my age? Am I your oldest client? Like, how, how does that look? And like, even like questions obviously come up every time we meet and some of them are what kind of um, challenges I'm going to say, what kind of challenges do you run into with women that are my age? You know, like what, what are some of the the roadblocks? And recently she did say like um, one of the things that she does see sometimes is that older, an older woman or my age um, will, um, so labor will start and it'll look like it's progressing and progressing and progressing and then it will stall and it will stall for such, I guess, like she didn't give me a timeline, but such a long period of time that then it obviously it creates exhaustion in the mom. And then that's where there might be, she might, there might have to be natural interventions to kind of keep that labor moving. So I was like, okay, well, that's something to think about. But no, my age like never, never came up. Well, she did say like, she doesn't expect that from me because of how healthy, you know, I'm maintaining myself and I'm constantly moving my body. I mean, I want to, I think I was, I think I was probably like one or two weeks pregnant when I did a marathon in October. Cause I found out I was pregnant in October, like probably like a week before my, <laughs> yeah, so like cool. a week before my 43rd birthday, which like. I totally like had a talk with God and was like, okay, God, I'm going to let it go. Like if I'm not pregnant by the time I'm 43 and I'm going to get emotional, (laughs) I was like, I'm going to let it go. Like maybe we're supposed to adopt, you know, like maybe our story for kids looks different. And then when I got pregnant, I was just so excited. (laughs) I was like, I can't believe this is happening. And um, I mean, I ran the marathon, but then like a week later, I took the test and I was pregnant. I was like, I'm pretty sure I was pregnant when I ran that marathon. <laughs> and like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That, not too many women can say that, right? Yeah. That's pretty neat. So I'm hoping all the movement like really ha- um, really helps with the pregnancy, with the labor really. And everybody's kind of been saying that. I mean, I ran into this woman at like um, Ross, which is like a clothing store here in Southern California. And um she was like, Oh my gosh, you're pregnant. She's like, I totally see you having an amazing labor. And then the baby's just going to pop right out. And it's not going to be long (laughs) at all. And I was like, I don't know you, but I love you. (laughs) Yes. Please keep just, I'm going to put you in my little earbud right here. You can come with me. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah. That's really neat. So I, I love that from the beginning you started researching, felt good about, you know, your age and pregnancy and what you're doing. And then two, that immediately nobody had anything bad to say like your midwife has been really supportive and like here's you know benefits risks but like no you're not you're not some geriatric patient and we don't have to treat you some crazy way like it's going to be okay that's really neat and I assume that she's dealt with a lot of women over the age of 35 if she's able to say well this is what you know we look out for but like it's no we have really positive things to say like it's going to be fine yeah yeah So that's huge. It is. She's amazing. And I think she takes, you know, like one client at a time. Everybody's story and journey like looks different. Let's talk a little, you talked about the marathon and this is something that you've talked about within the the Facebook group that really hit me because I was like, she's, you know, over the age of 35, you're doing all this fitness stuff and you're basically like, women are strong. Don't worry. Like, don't worry about all this other stuff. Like you can do this too. Talk to me a little bit about your fitness journey in regards to being pregnant. 
Um, so I just kept doing what I was doing. I mean, my, my midwife, Michelle said, if you were doing it before, you can keep doing it until your body tells you not to do it. And I think that's so important for us to learn really is to like pay attention to our bodies because our bodies will tell us to slow down, to stop, to rest, totally happen. Um, so I'm an avid hiker. I mean, I used to do it like a crazy lady, like hike like Mount Whitney in a day. And um, don't do that so much anymore, but I still do like local hikes in our area, which are probably, you know, five miles or less. Um, and there was a point, I want to say at the end of like the second trimester, because I was doing it at least two or three times a week. And um, there was a slight elevation gain, but not a lot. And um, I wanted to do it through the entire pregnancy, to be honest with you. And there there was a, a hike in my second trimester that I did with my girlfriend. And I was like, I, I mean, I was pushing myself. And then at the end, had to come home and take an Epsom salt bath. Because I was like, whoa, that was a lot. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> and, yeah, it hurt. I was like, yeah. oh, my body is exhausted. And I was like, that was probably my last hike on that hill. So I think it's really important. Like you have to you have to trust yourself and you know your body. You know when you need to stop and, and slow down. So then I just started like walking in the neighborhood. So I'm still walking. Um, I do probably between three or four miles every other day now. So I was, you know, doing it every day. And now it's like, Oh, even that's a lot. But <laughs> and then with walking the dog. So and then I'm doing the squats, like you said, I mean, I'm not doing all the exercises, like I don't do all three exercises that you suggested. I was like, Okay, I'm gonna do the ones that I like, and <laughs> that I enjoy doing, like the inverted upside down one. I mean, I've done it a few times. And I'm like, Yeah, that's not fun. I'm like, I hope the baby's head is where it's supposed to be. <laughs> I mean, while we're on here, Jess, I'm going to encourage you to work on that squat just a touch, just a touch, because I promise, <laughs> like, I, I think just, you know, you're going to be in that position in one way or another, and, like, you don't want your legs to be tired, and so if you find yourself with nothing to do and thinking, while I watch this show, I'm just going to try it for a couple minutes, then I'm just going to encourage that right now. <laughs> But I love it. I love that you're staying active. Um, how how have you noticed? I think this is really important for moms um, because walking is one of those things like you're talking about right now. And we're not talking hiking. We're not talking CrossFit and all this like crazier stuff, which again, if you were doing it prior, you can do it until your body tells you to stop, just like you said. But how do you find that fitness has helped you um, physically, but also like mental, emotionally for this pregnancy? Um. I mean, just in general, I think even before I was pregnant, if I don't work out, I just feel funky and crabby and <laughs> like it really, I am, I am not, I love to sleep. So if I can sleep in, I, I'm gonna, but getting the workout done in the morning just really sets the tone for the day. Like if I work out and then call someone in the morning, the tone in my voice is happy, a B, I'm alert, I'm ready, I'm excited. If not, I'm, I, you know, and I've noticed it myself where I'm like, mm, you know, but if you get that workout in the morning, you just feel like, oh, I'm amazing. I don't know. That's what I feel, that's what I feel like after I get that workout in the morning. Like even this morning. Uh, dopamine. Yeah, it's we got up and I, I did a four, well, no, not four, two and a half mile hike before I was doing this. And I did it on purpose. So I was like, I want to be up. I want to be, you know, like I want to be ready for, for Stephanie's podcast. So I'm going to get my workout in first. And it's so important. Oh, I love that. You, you had also mentioned about diet though, that you've been pretty good with your diet or that that's important to you. We talk a little bit about what your diet looks like during pregnancy. Yes. And so for the last, like, well, I got, I started to eat clean again in like the last two weeks, but before that, for about a, probably about a month, maybe I, I kind of, was slipping and was like, okay, I've been doing really good the whole time. I can like <laughs> have ice cream now. So <laughs> only I was having it for like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then, um, Girl, it's protein. Yeah, it's so, fine. <laughs> yeah. I was like, it's fine. I've been so good lately. Um, but no. Okay. So my diet is kind of like always really important to me. I mean, I, I try to remind myself about, I've heard about this 80, 20 rule. I don't know if you've heard about that, but basically like 80% of the time you're eating clean, you know what you're putting in your body, you're eating at home. And then 20% of the time, you know, you're going to be out with family and friends. You're going to be at other people's homes that maybe don't eat like you. And 
you don't have to like be crazy about it. You know, it doesn't have to be all one way. And like, we have to be realistic about life and, you know, the social parts of our lives are other families and friends that maybe don't eat like us and still enjoy everybody and the way they eat too. So I always try to remind myself of that. Um, but I, we stay pretty clean here. Um, I try to eat everything organic, grass fed, um, low grains, so low carbs, high protein. And sometimes it's hard to like, and I, in the beginning, like the first, I would say like the first month I was paying really close attention to like how much protein, like, okay, they say that I need this much protein. And then I was like counting things on every package to make sure I was hitting all those things. And for me, honestly, it just wasn't realistic that I was like, okay, I just need to kind of like see what that looks like and then right. make it a part of a regular day. All right. So you talked about the fact that getting that amount of protein can be a little tricky. I love what you said though. And this is exactly how it works for me when I'm trying to do any new thing. You're like for a couple of weeks, I looked at the packages and I wrote down what I was eating and I really figured out how much protein I was getting for the day. And then it became either this is working for me or it's not. You're not, I mean, you shouldn't have to, right? Like track it like that the entire way through. So then you were able to say, pretty sure I'm getting around the protein that I need now because I'm familiar with that. Is that correct? Is that kind of right? Yeah. So like, let me see what that, like in the beginning, I was like, okay, I got to make sure I have this. My, my baby needs this stuff, you know? <laughs> so I was like, and I literally was trying, I was like writing it down, like I had cheese. I had this much pro to make sure I was getting to that, that number. Um, and it was difficult. Like it was not easy to do. And one of the things I think, I think two eggs was, I want to say it was high. I want to say it was like 20 grams or something like, so every day I was like, I mean, I love eggs. So thank God for that. But I eggs every morning for breakfast. That's what I eat. Cause it's not even just the protein with the eggs, right? Like that is like a complete, like all the vitamins, all the nutrients, all the everything, like eggs are great. And when you're talking about like a, not grass fed, but like free range, right. Or like we have our own chickens for that reason. Um, those eggs are just like, you know, they're so good for you. And I don't, I mean, I hate eggs. My body hates eggs. But when I was pregnant, I was the same way. I was like two eggs, you know? <laughs> yeah, two eggs. It's yeah. For real. And and for those of you who are listening, I, I've even done, um, so you can like hard boil an egg. I don't know if you've ever heard of doing this. You can hard boil an egg and throw it into the blender with like your chocolate protein shake and a little bit of avocado. You don't even know it's there. It like almost makes it taste more of like a cake batter. I don't know if that even sounds good to you, but anyways, it's like another way. You're absolutely right. Like the, the protein and the eggs, that's, it's such a good way to start the day. So that's awesome. Yum. I would not even think to do that at all. Like throw a cooked egg into my, <laughs> into my shake. I'm going to try that. But what I've been doing recently, because now I'm on the, now I'm on the dates thing. So I started doing this. Well, I'm doing like three dates a day because the dates are ginormous. The so I'm like, hmm. right. yeah. So, um, but, and I'm throwing them in my shakes. So I was like, how am I going to, I, I was eating them just raw like that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, they're really, they're, to me, honestly, they're not yummy. Like I thought it was going to be, I was like, oh, it's going to be like candy. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so sweet. But I didn't think about that. Cause I don't really, I mean, I love cake and ice cream, but I, I don't like drink soda or like sugary iced tea like my stuff is like water and like iced tea with no sugar so when I ate I was like oh yeah I was like oh my I threw like four of them in one of my shakes the other day I was like whoa way too much sugar (laughs) so be careful with the dates if you're on that you only need a a couple but that is a good trick too throwing them in your shake yeah yeah no I love that we've had a couple of recipes I'm like we're gonna have to make a little recipe book for but like for how to get the dates down because some women in there yeah have, you've have you seen some of those and I'm like oh that's yeah good. one have. of them was like bacon wrapped mm-hmm. dates and I'm like yes please I don't even need to be oh, pregnant yeah <laughs> so Make that's some fun. cheese yeah I could see that <laughs> so have you had have you had any issues this pregnancy oh yeah that's another thing that I wanted to talk about so I'm so lucky and I think that it has to do with honestly like how we take care of our bodies before we're even you know like just our lifestyle really I have not had any complications with my pregnancy, no symptoms, like the things that people like, I'm hoping that this is a sign of what my labor is going to be like, that there's going to be nothing going on and baby's just going to pop right out because I haven't felt anything. Oh, that's not true. So the (laughs) only thing that I thought, I was like, okay, I just thought of something, um, was in the very beginning. And maybe it was like the first two or three weeks I was constipated. So I don't know if other women have experienced that, but so 
yeah so that was awful because i've never experienced anything like that before and I, I looked like six months pregnant like i sent a picture to my midwife and i was like this can't be normal like this is i'm so bloated but then she told me um magnesium i think it was she's like started drinking yeah and as soon as i did that i was fine but other than that no no morning sickness no not being able to sleep nothing no um like even like cravings or things like making me nauseous i mean some people have said like the smell of chicken or whatever whatever it was they're like i just can't be around it it's just i can't handle it i was like i haven't experienced any of it that's awesome and that's great too when you're talking about protein because that, that was what made it so hard for me is it was like beef was the first thing to go or chicken i can't remember and then the other meat was the next one like those were my two main was beef and chicken right and i could fish never like it was okay i could always handle it but it was so hard for me to eat. And I'm like, well, how am I going to get my protein? So I love that you haven't had that problem. That's really good. Something else you wanted to talk about too. Okay. So you haven't had any issues. You haven't had any like, um, gestational diabetes. You haven't had any protein in the urine. You haven't, you know, and I think what you're talking about is huge. So for those of you that are listening, um, especially those that listen and you're not pregnant yet, those are like my favorites. Cause you really get a chance to like be ahead of the game. But, uh, for sure. it, you, you, what you said was gold and that is, what you're doing before your pregnancy matters for how your pregnancy is going to continue. You know, your nutrition, your exercise, you don't have to change any of those things. Or if it's not this drastic thing, once you get pregnant, then you're you, that much more ahead of the game. So I love that you're sharing that and that this has been your experience. Like, no, I live a healthy lifestyle. I have clean eating. I exercise regularly and I haven't had any issues in my pregnancy. Like I've been comfortable and I, you know, don't have anything that's going to make me high risk or make it risk out of, of being at home with a, a home birth midwife. So that's really awesome. Something else that you want to talk about though was mindset. And I love that. And I wonder if it goes along with that, like, what is it that you want to make sure that you say to women today? Like, what do you want other women to hear from you today? That you get to decide like what your labor your pregnancy labor and birth look like like nobody else gets to d decide that for you i'm gonna get emotional because <laughs> you had said like that uh before you had said that i've had really good experiences you know i've had I have a great midwife that also has worked with women um that are over 35 and have had great pregnancies and a great labor and they were able to labor at home the way they wanted to and um the people you know, in my life are pretty supportive. A lot, honestly, probably would prefer me to be in a hospital. Um, and I could, I could think of a few that I've had conversation person, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversations with that, you know, have told me like, I'm nervous with you wanting to do this at home, specifically because I'm 43. And it's so upsetting, like to hear that from, your family that's so close to you that know you intimately because I'm like how can that be the only thing defining whether or not somebody can do this at home I'm like why isn't there why isn't there at least conversations maybe not studies about health and diet and why are not all of those things being considered and and then maybe not by the doctors because I could see why <laughs> I could see why they want us in the hospital, you know, like that's how they get paid, you know. But but you know, like the people that are close to me, I'm like, I, you know, I, and you know, most of it I think is obviously out of love and concern. I totally get that, but I'm like, but you know me, and you know like what I'm capable of. And I guess that's the other thing that's really interesting too is like we can train ourselves to do really hard things like a marathon for example right you train for months for something like that it's not something that you can just wake up and do i mean i remember when when i did it you know i'm training for three or four months to be able to make sure that i can get through 26 miles um but like our bodies are capable of doing those things with training yes god created our bodies to do what i'm about to do like it's not just capable god created my body to do that god didn't didn't necessarily create my body to do a marathon but i trained myself to do it so i just kind of remind myself like this is going to be it i mean i've never done it before so i'm sure there's going to be parts of it that are hard but i'm like this is going to be easy because my body knows what to do it was created for this so i just want moms to like remind themselves that your body was created to do this 
I love that so much. Talk to me for a moment, if you will. You're talking about God. You're talking about how we're created to do this. That's kind of my like big thing. Like my company or my like personal thing that I had before I did my essential birth, it was called Made for Birth. Like that was my doula name, you know? And it's because like we're just like you said, we're born with a uterus and over (laughs) and like the ability to birth babies. That's what we're here to do. And so have you had any spiritual experiences or anything that's kind of come to light for you being pregnant? I mean, you kind of talked about even getting pregnant, right? And what that was like. Have you had anything that's really stuck out to you along the way that you'd like to share with other women? One, that timing is everything. Because I think, you know, um, from what I've seen and like what I've heard, even getting pregnant nowadays is a little bit harder for for women. Um, Maybe even when we're a little bit older, it gets harder for us, probably because a lot of us are using birth control. I honestly have never have ever used birth control, but I would imagine that that affects um, some women. And I think like timing is everything because I didn't meet my fiance until I was 40. And had this happen at any other time, one, I wouldn't have been ready and it wouldn't have been him. And we like he, I just absolutely love him so much. He's so perfect and he's going to be an amazing father. And I would say, um, don't rush anything. And like when, when it's time for you to be pregnant, it's, it's going to happen. It's definitely going to happen. Thank you, Jess. I feel like I, <laughs> I want at least that last clip. Like I want my teenagers to hear that too. It's so big. It's so huge what you're talking about. And um, you're right. You know, we, we do live in a society that, you know, we want things and we want them now. And, um, but timing does matter and who you're with does matter. And I appreciate you sharing that. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yes, for sure. I'm like, I'm like, don't cry. <laughs> Stop crying. You can cry. It's a safe space. It's okay. Um, I thank you for your time, for your energy. I am so happy to have someone like you that can share with other moms. Like, no, having a baby is normal. And actually, it's totally okay and like a really good thing to be able to have a baby when you're having a baby. Um, I, I really appreciate the fact that you not only talked about, you know, how you, you lived lifestyle prior and what you're doing during pregnancy, but what that looks like for you, um, even right now and, and working with a midwife and what your plan is. So I think everything that you shared today is really powerful and I hope it touches a lot of women, whether or not they're over 35, but for those that are listening that are over the age of 35, I hope they leave and they're like, heck yes. She can do what I can do it. You know, that's yes, that's for sure. The goal. I love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're amazing. So thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. I'm so excited. Thank you for having me. And I hope I come back after I have the baby and I have an amazing birth story to share. <laughs> me too. Me too. That would be incredible. So hopefully we'll see you then. <laughs> All right. Thanks. That's it for this week, but make sure you subscribe to the podcast so that you get notifications first as I drop new episode every week. And don't forget to head over to myessentialbirth.com for all of the free downloads mentioned here and to join the birth course and community serving pregnant moms just like you. If you enjoyed this and other episodes, I would love it if you would take a few minutes to leave a review on Apple Podcasts. I read every single one and include one at the beginning of each episode. See you next week.